Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about um, Ms. Marvel, Episode 2, Crushed. And so basically, it, do not proceed if you haven't watched the episode unless you don't care about spoilers. But oh my gosh, there's so much. This episode was jam-packed. Um, let's start at the very beginning. Um, we got a fabulous training montage and Kamala was just feeling herself and it was so great to see that. Um, I didn't check how long the episode was, but I felt like a lot happened in this episode. Um, we also, as the title of the episode implies, she was crushing on someone. So a very handsome young man named Kamran. And it was interesting because um, she doesn't, I guess, really see Bruno as boyfriend material, I guess. Or maybe she's not crushing on him. Maybe she just sees him as a friend. And I totally thought, like, I didn't, I haven't read all the, um, all the comic books, obviously. But I had thought Bruno was going to be her natural love interest, but Cameron was pretty cool. And then, oh, at the end... It looks like Kamran specifically, um, his mom was looking for her and like how in the world, cause like we know those shady, I don't know if they're actual police people or like they could be pol like police people, but like they were looking for Kamala and ever since she showed up at AvengerCon and now like at the very end of the episode, there wasn't even an extra credit scene. But um, Kamran picks her up and she's trying to evade the Popo and the FBI and all the people. Um, so yeah, like, I just, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think. Like, I feel like he, like, he is totally like whatever the grandmother was trying to get. Like, I mean, it seems like those nega bands that she's using are what they're after obviously of course but like i i don't know how they would have known because it i doesn't it doesn't like from what she from what kamala learned in this episode it doesn't seem like her grandmother actually used the nega bands it was just more of like um her, her mother used them and her mother disappeared. So like, where did her mom disappear to during the partition? Oh, and that was an interesting, um, to not a tidbit. It's like a straight up, um, story of partition. Like, I don't know if you guys know this about partition and how Pakistan and India became two separate countries instead of just one gigantic India. But, um, I've seen a couple movies on it now and it was terrifying and it was tragic and there was just a lot of loss and like several, um, like I'm thinking the movie Gandhi covered it. Although Gandhi, spoiler warning, um, he does, um, Ben Kingsley does wear a brown face to portray Gandhi. And then, um, there's, I'm thinking of another movie. I can't remember what it was called, but, um, uh, it had the, it had the dad, Robert, the actor that plays Robert on Downton Abbey, I think he was, um, ruling or like in charge of India before or during the partition. And it was like, I have to watch it again, but like it was, it was tough to watch, but, um, partition is just so tragic. And it's like, I'm glad they, they talked about it with reverence and the respect it was due. But, um, yeah, like I'm kind of, there's so many things like I, I, I don't want to say too many theories that I might have in case I'll be dead wrong, but, and I haven't seen, I haven't checked what, um, emergency awesome has said about, about it because I, I kind of don't want to be spoiled. I want to go in blind because, um, they could be changing it completely from the comic books and, the, and like, I, 
I thought it was cute that they're they're tying things in like Kingo from the Eternals was definitely um, a point a topic of the, when Kamala was talking to Kamran and they were bonding over Bollywood and stuff and they were talking about Kingo being a big crush for um, for their moms and stuff and I thought that was cute but like like I really. I mean, I don't want to get too hyped up that there's going to be an Avengers, an Avenger, um, or another established superhero showing up on the show because it, I don't think the show needs it. But at the same time, I think they're going to need to do something to get it, to link it to the Captain Marvel's movie, um, the, the Marvel's movie, which is Captain Marvel 2. So like a lot of neat stuff happened, like... Nakia um, wants to run for council member, and that would be great. Um, I feel like I feel like that was a really inspiring like little speech that she had about how she thought wearing a hijab would make her more would be would silence the people who thought she was white, and I I just I kind of feel like. That conversation would have had more impact if Kamala read more as a brown girl instead of ethnically ambiguous and possibly white passing like she is. Um, like in the comic books, she does not pass the paper bag test. And I've talked about this before in the last video. But yeah, like I just, like the colorism of, of choosing such a light Kamala of Iman Vellani, who is so light. I mean, I know, I get it. I, she's a really big Ms. Marvel fan and she has been reading the comics for ages and she definitely brings the enthusiasm that I would like to see in my superhero, um, like media, but I just, I wish that they had chosen somebody darker and I, and I, I feel like that discussion of, you know, being othered, being on the cusp, because I am also light skinned, you know, I'm also, uh, I've also been told by people, oh, you're not like the other Mexicans. You're different. Okay. Is it different because I can, I don't have an accent because I'm light. What is your problem? What is the deal? I'm just as Mexican as they are. And it's just that you like me better because I'm lighter. And I feel like there's a, conversation to be had about colorism that's just not happening or it's not ringing true because Kamala herself is played by someone who's so light-skinned <sighs> anyways if this is nearing 10 minutes and I haven't even talked about how adorable it was that Bruno um came to Eid um with the fam with Kamala's with the Khan family and like and he was even dressed up and like I thought that was that was great that that he dressed respectfully and stuff I would like to hear thoughts from actual Muslim people like um my first encounter with Eid was in college and somebody randomly gave me food and I had no idea why they were giving me food and they're like it's Eid and I'm like okay what's Eid and and like the, like they didn't explain it to me but I think they were kind of like this was I mean this is a long time ago this is I'm giving myself my age away by talking about how long ago this was but like um then I found out about Eid and and I'm like oh I connected the dots okay they're it was their, um, their break, their breaking fast and they were like, but it, it was, it was a very turbulent time, a very racist time. And like, I, f I feel like I wish I had said something more appropriate if I had known better, but I was so young and dumb when, when it happened. But I mean, it's nice. It would be really great if we could if this show could undo some of the Islamophobia that has happened in the past MCU films, like I'm thinking Iron Man, especially, um, I, what was it? Like the first one. And then, um, 
I think they even delved into it, like, because, like, the guy that was, had him held captive, that had Tony Stark held captive was supposed to be East, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he was supposed to be Mena or if he was supposed to be South Asian, but, like, um, it was definitely supposed to be happening around Islamic followers, you know, like Muslims. So there's a lot of Islamophobia that's been going on in the MCU. And I'm not naive as to believe that it'll actually undo real world Islamophobia. But I mean, it's nice to see that Marvel's making an effort to reach out to the Muslim community. I would like to know how Muslim followers feel, feel about that. I'm going to look for some and I might make a part two just to talk about how, um, how Muslim followers feel about, um, the show and how they're being portrayed. I, I feel like it's like it's being done respectfully, but then again, I'm not Muslim. I, I have learned the hard way not to speak over other people. I have definitely made mistakes, but anyways, um, I just, I'm enjoying the show and I can't wait to see what happens next week. And yeah, let me know what you thought about the show. And, um, I'm going to try to like put together a show, like a presentation or an OBS or something to see about what the Muslim fans are saying about the show to see. Um, cause I did something similar for, um, the Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett. Um, show and it would be nice to know what Muslim followers think because I don't want to overstep on anything. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye